A young woman lay alone in a hospital bed, consumed by despair. She was exhausted from a long and painful illness, and guilt tormented her for events from years past. Memories flooded her mind, causing her to relive the moments that had changed the lives of those who were once close to her. As the academic year drew to a close, three college students in their second year, Leah, Wendy and Claudia, decided to celebrate at a club. When they arrived, Leah, the most sociable and merry of the group, found them a free table and hurried to the dance floor. Being a professional dancer, she felt at home there. Her flexibility and grace caught the attention of nearby dancers, and one of them even joined her in a dance that earned applause from the crowd. His name was Simon. "'Are you here alone?' her new acquaintance asked cautiously. "'No, of course not.' Leah replied with a smile, and seeing that the young man got upset, she added, I'm here with my girlfriends. We have a table over there. Simon brightened up immediately and informed her that he had come here with friends as well. Since they were also a group of three, he suggested that they sit at one table. Within a few minutes, all six of them were sitting together, chatting casually. Claudia had been watching Simon and Leah the entire time, but they didn't pay any attention to her. As the evening came to an end, their friends offered to see them off, but they politely declined. However, Simon slipped his business card into Leah's pocket and whispered, Please, call me. I would love to see you again. Leah smiled in response. She liked Simon and didn't try to hide it. As soon as the girls got into a cab, Claudia couldn't stand it and began to resent the fact that they had no luck with the company today again. In my opinion... Those were cute guys, right, Leah? Wendy chuckled. Did Simon give you his number? I, for example, wrote mine on Morgan's hand. Well, yes, Leah dreamily smiled, but I haven't decided yet whether to call him or not. Oh, of course, Claudia suddenly snorted irritably. You're glowing so much that it's obvious to everyone that you'll run to call him right away. There was so much undisguised anger in Claudia's voice that her friends looked at her in surprise and even asked her if she was feeling okay. Claudia didn't answer and, asking the driver to stop the car, got out halfway home. Wendy and Leah looked at each other again in surprise. What's wrong with her? Is she jealous or something? Wendy asked. But Leah just shrugged. All her thoughts were currently occupied with her new acquaintance. When she got home, Leah slipped into her room and fell asleep immediately, dreaming of a soon meeting with Simon. Two weeks later, Wendy told Leah that Morgan suggested that they all meet again at the same club and celebrate his birthday. The same company of six people had fun at the same club again. Simon was constantly beside Leah, and Claudia still watched them with dissatisfaction, but didn't say anything out loud. Two months later, when Leah announced to her friends that Simon had proposed to her, Claudia reacted sharply and unexpectedly. "'Are you out of your mind? You don't even know him. Are you sure he really likes you?' she exclaimed. "'Then why would he date me?' wondered Leah. After a moment of silence, Claudia suddenly approached Leah and hugged her, apologising for her impulsiveness. Claudia explained that she was afraid that after so many years of friendship, they would communicate less because Wendy and Leah started spending more time with their significant others. What about their third friend, Ben? He likes you, doesn't he? Leah whispered, soothingly stroking Claudia's back. He's not my type. Let's change the subject. What are you planning to do today? Leah remembered that she had a performance soon and she hadn't chosen a costume for the dance yet. Waving goodbye and promising to meet later, she ran off. The performance went great. Leah's family and friends came to support her. Simon gave her a huge bouquet of white roses. Claudia went with Leah to the dressing room and bustled around her, helping her get ready. Can you feel that cold draft? Leah asked, puzzled. You're just overheated, that's all. It's making you feel that way. Claudia reassured her and nervously laughed. Really? Okay then, agreed Leah, 
but I have amazing news. Simon came to my parents' house yesterday and officially asked for my hand. We're getting married in the fall. Claudia couldn't hide her surprise, but quickly pulled herself together and congratulated her friend with a forced smile. The next day, Leah didn't come to the college. As her parents reported, she started feeling unwell at night and got to the hospital with a diagnosis of pneumonia. Simon learned about this from Wendy, who told him that Leah most likely caught a cold after performing. The guy immediately rushed to the hospital and ran into Claudia there. Hey, Claudia, he exclaimed. Have you seen Leah? How is she? And where can I find her? Yes, we just saw each other, Claudia answered cheerfully and waved her hand down the hallway. Her ward is over there. She said today they should get the test results. Simon didn't listen any further and ran in the indicated direction. Although Leah wasn't in the ward, Simon found a stack of papers with test results on the nightstand. He automatically grabbed the top sheet, which had Leah's name on it, and saw that it was a test for HIV and syphilis. The results were positive. Horrified, he stood there, looking at that awful sheet of paper, not immediately noticing that Leah and a nurse had entered the room. Simon, it's good that you came, the girl exclaimed. Are you okay? she asked anxiously. You're still asking, he said angrily. How can I be okay when my fiancé hid something like this from me? He shouted and threw the papers in Leah's face. The terrified girl didn't understand what was going on. She tried to ask Simon about it, but he refused to explain anything. You know everything yourself, and forget about my proposal. Got it? Goodbye, he said coldly before slamming the door and leaving the room. Leah had a real hysterical fit, and the nurse asked her parents to watch over her. Understand, she's not our only patient, and I'll have to answer for her antics later, the nurse said. What happened? Leah's mother asked anxiously. She took plenty of pills, the nurse whispered, checking the IV. Fortunately, a neighbour in the ward noticed empty blister packs under the sheet. We managed to wash her stomach and got her out of the world. Meanwhile, at the bar, Claudia ran into Simon as he was finishing his next glass of beer. Simon, what's wrong with you? She asked, surprised. You know everything right, he replied. And where did she catch these disgusting diseases? I thought I found a normal girl to marry, but she turned out to be like this. If I told you, would you believe me? Claudia angrily retorted. No one believes me. That's just my fate. Simon laughed bitterly. Drunkenly, he suggested that Claudia go with him, and she agreed. Two weeks later, Leah appeared at the college, intending to transfer to another place. Claudia and Wendy tried to dissuade their friend, but she had good reasons to leave. I feel bad here. I don't want to live when I think about him, she said listlessly. Leah left for another city, and meeting new people and studying helped her come to her senses. She eventually graduated successfully as a specialist in Eastern languages and received an offer to do an internship in Korea, which she gladly accepted. Wendy learned all of this from a letter Leah finally wrote to her. Wendy was happy that her friend was doing well, but she couldn't be happy for Claudia, who invited her to the wedding with Simon. I understand everything now. Did you break them up just so that you could marry him? Wendy whispered in shock. What does that have to do with me? Claudia pretended to be outraged. You better tell me. Will you be a bridesmaid at my wedding? Enough with the lies. Of course I won't tell Leah anything. I don't want her to get hurt again. But sorry, I won't be at your wedding. Claudia snorted and laughed in response. After the wedding, Claudia enjoyed the success of her personal life for a while. However, she began to notice irritation in Simon's eyes when her attempts to get pregnant ended unsuccessfully. She knew her husband wanted children badly, and she was afraid of losing him if she couldn't give him a child. Finally, 
Simon forced Claudia to undergo an examination which revealed that she was infertile. Since then, Simon often stayed at work, came home smelling of feminine perfume. Two years later, he simply packed his bags and left for another woman, who was expecting his child. Claudia cried in her empty apartment, sincerely not understanding why all of this was happening to her. One day at work, she suddenly felt sick and passed out. Her colleagues called an ambulance and in the hospital, she was diagnosed with a brain tumour. Surgery was impossible and Claudia faced painful chemotherapy treatments. One day, Simon visited Claudia in the hospital. He appeared depressed and unkempt, as if he had aged several years. He burst into tears and talked about his child's autism and his helplessness to cure him. Claudia was silent for a moment, then tearfully asked for Simon's forgiveness. Simon incomprehensibly looked at his ex-wife, and with tears in her eyes she explained, it was me who had switched the form with Leah's tests back then. It was not her result, but a one named woman from another department. Simon was shocked. We got what we deserved, he said, after a minute of silence, and left the ward. Wendy couldn't help but tell Leah about Claudia's illness. After struggling to find her friend's phone number, she asked Leah to come over, revealing that Claudia wanted to talk to her about something. Leah who had a happy marriage, two wonderful boys, and a rich, positive life, promised to come and hung up. When she arrived in her hometown, she met with her parents and Wendy, and then went to the hospital to see Claudia. At the sight of her long-awaited friend, Claudia burst into tears and begged for Leah's forgiveness. Why? the woman asked, not understanding anything, and affectionately patted her friend on the shoulder. And then Claudia told the story of how she had separated her from Simon out of jealousy. She felt very surprised when Leah, listening calmly to her story, said, You know, I can't forgive you, because if you hadn't done that, I wouldn't have left, and my life wouldn't have turned out so happily. As Leah was leaving, Simon entered the ward Realising who was in front of him, he attempted to hold the woman back. You know, she orchestrated everything back then, don't you? What she did is one thing, but how you behaved is entirely different. You didn't want to explain or find out the truth back then, so it wasn't important to you. It hurts me, but it's all in the past. Goodbye, she said, and left without even looking back. Simon watched Leah leave, realising she was truly happy without him. Understanding that he deserved it all, he leaned to the wall, feeling powerless.